All right, all right, all right, everybody. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whichever time of the day this message finds you. Habari za Asabui, Habari za Mchana, Habari za Gioni, brothers and sisters, all over the world. Kakas and Dadas, Dadas and Kakas, all over the world. The name of this channel is The African Times, and I'm Thomas. All right, everybody, welcome back. This is a, another episode of the Night Chat. As you can see, it's, uh, it's nighttime. <laughs> it's nighttime. All right, it's pretty uh, late or pretty early, whichever uh, way you want to look at it. Uh, I think I started at 2 o'clock in the morning. It took me a little while to get to get organized. But in this episode of the Night Chat, uh, we're going to discuss capitalism, the duality of capitalism, and how that impacts us, people that look like me and you. Uh, capitalism... When we talk about duality, uh, there are many facets of duality. Duality in this context means the uh, being able to produce two results, uh, to put forth two things and, and, and two kind of ideas. Uh, both are in conflict with each other, contradictory, so they're usually the opposite. And capitalism produces this kind of effect in all areas of people activity. So uh, I'm going to give you a brief general description of what I mean. First, capitalism is an, is an economic system. It's a system that uh, is designed to generate wealth for individuals, um, uh, individual groups, and I know that sounds contradictory, but that's what I'm talking about. Uh, when I say individual groups, what I mean is a company, uh, a, capitalist, a company practicing capitalism. A company is made up of a group of individuals who work for one company. Uh, and so that company as itself is one entity, but again, made up of many different individuals who share the same goal. But now, oftentimes... Uh, in a company uh, that's made up of a group of individuals, there's, there may be one individual or a small number of individuals at the top. Uh, and if it's one person at the top, uh, and, and, and in many cases it is, then there you have your individual. Uh, so capitalism is ben benefiting that individual and those that small group of individuals who are near to that person at the top benefit greatly just like the person at the top and usually capitalism does this in a way that is at the expense of the many people uh, who are at the lower end of the capitalist spectrum in the case of a company you'll have a, uh, maybe one owner and the owner may be the chairman or the chairman of the board or, or have a chairman of the board that's uh, closely related to him personally or her personally and then the board, uh, a group of other people who help move the company forward. Uh, and those are usually very small numbers of people. It could be 10, 15, 20 uh, for a large company that uh, uh, has 700, 800, 50,000 employees. So the employees, the large number of employees, they don't benefit in the way that the owner does. And capitalism puts the notion of this concept as being one that is superior uh, to other economic systems because capitalism uh, is promoted by those individuals who benefit the most from it. So they're never going to say anything about the economic system of capitalism that is detrimental to the maintenance of the capitalist system. Now, I just gave you an example of a dual nature where you have one owner, a small group of people, and a company. So it's one company, but it's many people that make it up. 
So therein lies the contradiction of capitalism being for all people. It's not. That's the way they put put it forth. It's for that small group of people that's at the top of the pyramid. Uh, now, uh, here's another example of the dual nature of capitalism. Uh, capitalism professors, uh, those people who are the proponents of it, they go out and they tell everyone that capitalism is an economic system that uh, creates uh, opportunities for everyone and a large middle class, meaning I just gave you an example, small people at the top, the owners, the, the small group of people who run the company. Capitalism professes that when you go out uh, and create a capitalist enterprise, then that enterprise works through the capitalist system to create opportunities and jobs for people in a middle class. So you'll have a small group of people at the top, the upper class, uh, and uh, they benefit greatly. And then, oh, because they benefit greatly, the middle class, that, that group of people who generally work for large companies or work for government or what, ha what have you, who appear to have a decent income and decent uh, standard of living and decent living wages, uh, capitalism helps to ensure that that segment of the society is present and develops and grows and is maintained. Now, uh, the duality of that is that it professes to do that and then they leave out the part that there's another group. There's another group and that is those individuals who are not in the middle class the individuals who are considered lower class, uh, that group is the sizable group. It's much larger than the middle class and incredibly larger than the people at the top, the owners, the board members, and those, those people. But they don't, they don't, the people who promote capitalism don't emphasize that capitalism creates the largest group of people that it creates is a lower class. They don't do that, and that's the duality. They also promote that, and they kind of leave out, they talk about the middle class. They leave out, really, the uh, significance and context of that small group of people at the top and how they benefit and the lower class. So what you really have, if you examine capitalism closely, is you have a dual system that create that uh, one system that creates a dual reality of haves and have-nots, and and the haves and have-nots is really, uh, you know, I, I forget whether it's Karl Marx who said it or whoever whoever said it. One of these W's back in the day talked about the haves and have-nots, and what all that that really means is there's a group of people with money, and there's a there there are group uh, there is a group of people with no money. Or very little, and they're struggling from day to day to survive. This is capitalism. It's the system. It, it, it's how it works. They will tell you, and again, a dual nature, they'll tell you the duality of capitalism is that no, capitalism creates the opportunities for you, but you have to put yourself in a position to be able to capitalize on the opportunity. That's what they tell you, and that's what's promoted. But the duality is that capitalism does not create the opportunity for you to uh, improve your situation if you're in one class to move up upward mobility to another class. It actually creates barriers to that. It creates barriers to that because the capitalist enterprise, the primary goal is profit. Profit. And, and so profit being the primary goal creates many barriers in front of people. And, and, and the barriers uh, pretty much are, are, are monetary. And they, they, uh, the, the monetary barriers present themselves in many ways. So let's take a look at an example of one that's crucial to uh, upward mobility as professed and promoted by proponents of capitalism, and that would be education, okay? You're taught 
as many of us for many, many, many generations have been taught that if you improve your education, if you invest in your education and you work hard, uh, then you can find success in the American dream, which is a capitalist dream. And so many young people uh, try to take this approach because that's the only approach, approach that they're given really to be able to succeed is you have to become educated, knowledgeable in a particular area, and then that gives you the opportunity. And because it's a capitalist system, those people who are educated compete in a much uh, more aggressive fashion uh, and, and, and uh, overachieve over above everybody else around them because they have the knowledge to do so. Now, that's what they profess. Here's the barrier. Because capitalism is profit-driven, your universities, your educational system is supposed to give you the education that you need so that you can compete in the world and strive for upward mobility. The profit system says the price of education should rise based on the demand. And if the demand is high, then you can raise the price. Now, the demand naturally would be high because the capitalist system tells you what? You have to get the education so that you can get the opportunity. So that means everybody coming up in a capitalist system have this outlook. They all have it. So then the demand for the education is going to be high. Then what? The capitalist system is old demand is high. Okay, well we can raise the price because they're going to pay it because they need it. Okay, you raise the price. Now here's the barrier. If you don't have that money, to pay for that education, then how in the world, how in the world are you going to get the knowledge that you need so that you can ha have the opportunity to compete and, and grow and thrive in a capitalist system? You can't. So then what does the capitalist system do? Dual nature. Remember, it promoted education as the way to do it, but it left out the fact that they're going to give you barriers because of the profit factor. So then what do they do? They create another area, another means to make profit, student loans. Oh, no, it's a great system. Yeah, you know, you get the education. Okay, well, you don't have the money, no problem. We'll give you a loan that you have to have for the rest of your life, an extreme amount of money, and then you raise the price. So even though the capitalist system is telling you, it's a dual thing again, capitalism tells you, okay, well, no, we it's a capitalist system. The profit uh, factor is not harmful to you because it creates uh, business entrepreneurs. So now the banks, the banks who give you the loans, they're profit driven and they're what fulfilling your need no we're we're helping the people we're providing the, the the money they need to get the education yeah they're providing the money you need to get the education so that they can make the profit they want then when you get the education and now you're you're just crippled with these loans you find that capitalism does not have uh, the jobs capable of paying you enough money to live and pay back the loans. But for you, that's your problem. Because for the capitalist, they've already made their profit from the loans through the banking system. So the dual nature, again, is all oh, we're here to help you. Capitalism is great, and you're going to benefit from this system. Well, in actuality, when you look at this example of education, you didn't really benefit from the system. You, the system crippled you. It, it gave you a barrier. Now you, you, you are suffering from a tremendous amount of debt. But what is the dual nature? That's your problem. You suffer. The other people, the people in control of the banks, the high finance, and the They've already made a tremendous amount of profit off of your misery. But what do they promote? Oh, we're good because we are working to help children have a student loan so that they can get the education that they need. Do you understand? Now, that's just in a couple of areas to give you a, an example of the dual nature of capitalism. We'll talk more about the dual nature of this system uh, and what it really creates, the haves and have-nots. And as I told you in this example, uh, when I told you that 
you go out to get a job, but they don't have a job. It's because capitalism is profit driven. So when they see that there's an opportunity for a company to make more profit by packing its company up, shutting down where it's located in the U.S. and moving it abroad to another area where they can pay lower wages and cut their expenses and increase their profit, they're going to do that. Again, dual nature telling you, no, capitalism is here. We're for you and we're all for, you know, everybody growing. Not true. That is what they promote as the system that is going to be great. And it's a global system. And it's a global international market. And if you allow capitalism to be the foundation of your market, then the whole world will rise together. But as you see, uh, no, there are other countries that are suffering as a result of capitalist enterprises leaving one part of the world going to another part of the world to acquire that other part of the world's labor force and pay them wages that they would not be able to pay in the place that they just left. For example, the United States. Okay, so again, dual nature of capitalism. They're going to promote to you all of the wonderful, wonderful benefits of capitalism, uh, but those benefits are primarily for that small group of people, that small, that one individual and, you know, 20, 30, 40 other uh, people to make money. And as they make a tremendous amount of wealth, they need other people, the middle class, to actually work in these enterprises to keep generating the revenue. So those people in the enterprise, in, in the middle class that work for the enterprise, they're not the primary goal of capitalism to create that group for the benefit of the people is to create that group so that, that group actually can do the work necessary to raise the money and earn the money and make the money and the profits for the small number of people, the one individual at the top of the enterprise. So again, dual nature of capitalism. It'll promote to you in every area of people activity the glorious and wonderful benefits of capitalism and how it benefits all, but the actuality is that it benefits a very few and creates a large, large, large population of people who have nothing, who are poor and impoverished and unable to live a prosperous life. They struggle day to day, week to week to survive. That's capitalism. Okay, everybody, we're going to talk a little bit more about capitalism in another broadcast of capitalism, the duality of it. Uh, this has been an episode of the Night Chat, and we'll have more of these. Uh, thanks for watching. I appreciate you. Uh, you can help us uh, continue to put out this kind of information so that our people can understand the world that they live in. Our young people need to hear this information, share these videos with them so they understand. Uh, and we're going to go into more and, and, and send in questions. Hit the like button if you like. All right, And you can support us by donating uh, to uh, Cash App. Dollar sign Tommy Ticklebone. Cash app. Dollar sign Tommy Ticklebone. And if you if you don't uh, see the uh, the information uh, in the video, you can go to the channel uh, page, and the link to the Cash App is there. We appreciate your support. We welcome your support, both uh, your viewership, your likes, and your subscriptions. And please like, subscribe, and share. And if you can donate, it's greatly appreciated. All right, you guys, this has been an episode of The Night Chat. It's good talking to you. Love you all. Uhuru. Uhuru. Uhuru.